Thank you. Uh, I'm Amrit Shetty. I'm a psychiatrist working in the team. I'm Connor Johnston. I'm the resource coordinator in the team. <clears throat> and I'm Joe Roberts. I'm the clinical lead and mental health nurse in one of the teams. So, um, let's... So we are a community mental health rehabilitation service in Cheshire and Wirral Partnership. Um, and we thought we'd focus on three reasons why we're proud of our work. Um, and we'll go through each of these. So we, we, are, we do believe we have a unique model compared to the rest of, I suppose, lots of the other teams we've worked with. Uh, we've, while we focus on a small group of patients, uh, we also really focused our offer to the wider system and how actually we can improve the wider offer to people with similar complexities who are working with other teams. And um, we're very clear right from the start that actually to get the best patient experience and the best patient outcomes, we actually also have to focus on developing a trained and motivated workforce. Uh, and I'll go through each of these uh, in a little bit of detail. Um, in terms of the unique model, um, as, as pe if people are aware of mental health rehabilitation teams, most focus on uh, diagnostic of people with psychosis. Uh, we did a lot of work before we started the team trying to understand what was the need in the local area and we were very clear that actually if we focused on psychosis we wouldn't fulfill the need what was in Cheshire and Wirral. So we focused on complexity opposed to diagnosis. So we focused on a group of patients who traditionally would spend years in hospital and sometimes decades. People who unfortunately with, with the risks, with things that have happened, uh, have not lived in community for a really long time, and actually people felt they could never live in the community. We focused on a very small group of patients, and it was driven by a strong sense of actually about equality and equity, about actually if we provided the right support, uh, we, people could actually live in the community and actually offer things back to the community too. Um, while we were talking to commissioners about the model. Well, there was a lot of interest. People were saying, actually, it's a really good idea, but we couldn't get a commitment for funding because every, everyone's always stretched. So we went, uh, we used the innovative funding model. Essentially, we pay, paid per patient per week, um, and which meant that some, when we started the team, we've actually had to work in a different team and, uh, and do this on top of our jobs. But what it really allowed us to do is focus on uh, quality improvements. So what it's allowed us to do is actually change the service and change the offer based on patient needs. So we've, we're very good, I think, at collecting outcome measures, focusing on what's important for who, the people we're trying to serve and actually change the model based on need. Um, we also use a, a shared team approach. So uh, we work with people who are considered high risk and are complex in lots of different ways. So we work together as a single team. And I suppose that was the, uh, one of the reasons why we focus so much on getting the right workforce. Uh, the focus was for people with mental health issues, but again, we're very clear that this is not just about mental health, it's about focusing on the full person. So our focus is a small bit about, it's about medication, but a large bit about is social rehabilitation, about employment, about getting people back into communities, about getting them connected to the communities. And part of that, we use a tech, uh, a, an approach called open dialogue, which is in, in, in very simply about thinking about people not as islands, but as part of a big community, and actually how do we work with all the people who are important for that service user. And as I said, we focused on quality improvement. The second bit is on the benefits to the wider system. So the team is, is a sort of the tertiary level team where we focus, we work directly with a small group of patients. But then what we wanted to do was actually how could we make the experience of the wider uh, patient group better. So we. We've changed, I suppose, how we do rehabilitation across the trust. So we have a single point of access. We've got rid of multiple assessments. We don't have referral forms. We've changed how we support people in out-of-area placements. Um, and we, we've had some really clear quality standards and uh, things about how actually we support the wider, their support mechanisms. We've worked in collaboration with Chester University and developed a bespoke training package just to focus on uh, uh, the people who, about developing skills and really focusing on the soft skills, not just for our team, but actually about uh, people in supported housing, the third sector providers, and we're just about to roll this out now. Um, we also did a focus piece of work with John Moore's University, which is another university in, uh, in Liverpool, um, and to further understand patient experience and actually change the model and modify the model based on, based on that. We have worked in collaboration with other teams. We're going to lead next week to actually see whether we can work together and look at actually what the similarities are and actually learn from each other. And then we really focused on repatriation uh, and, and, and that patient group who actually were hundreds of miles away from home uh, with, with at, at some point, no realistic chance of returning. So we were focusing on that patient group. And 
for us, this was a, about culture change. It's about change of actually how do we how do we treat uh, as a community treat people who are ill and are considered very ill and. How do we change their attitude towards those patients? Uh, how do we support their families who uh, lots of times had given up hope that they'll ever come back? And actually, how do we work with staff who, uh, it, and, it, and, and to be realistic, it, it was going to be difficult. There were going to be challenges. Actually, how do we then support the staff and support the culture change there? I, I won't go through these, but these are some of the outcomes. And I suppose the main bits for us is we found that people's symptoms reduced. We found that people have been detained for decades, were in the community, happy to see us without without us having to chase after them. We saw that people who had never worked in their life and had had education, we saw about 35% of a group of patients is supporting by either in voluntary work, training, or employment. We, we were very keen to actually make a financial argument. So actually, we used a financial argument to say, actually, if you use money effectively and the right way, you could actually improve people's lives. And we showed that we could save, I suppose, millions of pounds by just focusing on the small group of patients. And I suppose the majority of patients we supported never went back to hospital. So we've been around for about two and a half years now. Um, and I suppose this goes back to what really matters. And while well, sometimes work, work can be hard and we have difficult uh, discussions and decisions to make, but I suppose it goes back to we are also very lucky to hear some really incredible patient stories of people who are stuck in hospital peers now living full lives and living with families. And I suppose I won't read that out, but doing what they, they should have been doing. Um, I will hopefully be able to read that. And I'll hand over to Connor and Joe to talk about Thank you. Um, so hopefully I can get this microphone a bit right. Um, so I suppose uh, another aspect of our team is that we wanted to look at what working for MISS means for staff. Um, now, obviously a lot of our day-to-day -day role is, of course, with working with patients, but actually... Um, some of the, the, the big focus was put onto the staff and our well-being as, as practitioners, but as people as well, um, going home. So we're going to touch on a couple of the things that we looked at during that process. So I suppose the, the first one really is looking at um, third party providers. So in terms of some of the people that we work with, obviously live in their own homes, but they also live in supported living, for example. And some of the um, research that, that we found as a team and, and evidence is that actually if we can provide regular supervision to those staff in the supported livings and clinical supervisions, uh, tabletop events as well, for those to share some of the challenges, um, we can also upskill those um, because we are a temporary service in terms of our timescale is up to two years with our patients. Um, now, obviously, that means that their network in terms of family and friends are after us, if you like, um, and we are a, a temporary measure to do as much as we can during that time. So um, making sure that we're training some of the supported living staff along with other agencies and professionals and working in a person-centered approach is something that we really pride ourselves on. As you can see as well, we also have protected time for um, daily meetings uh, amongst other bi-monthly training sessions as a whole team. Our team cover quite a, a large footprint of the trust across Cheshire and the Wirral, um, for some people who are, are familiar with that footprint. Um, one of our ethos uh, and something that we're, we're making sure that we provide as a team to staff is open dialogue training, which I think Amrish touched on a couple of minutes ago. That is a family therapy approach um, for people that haven't come across it before. And it focuses not just on the patient, but also what we call their network. Their network could be friends, family, partner, um, a, a variety of things amongst other professionals. And again, it's that recognition that actually we, we can see people weekly, um, daily, but actually there's, there's a lot of time that they spend with other professionals and, and family members also in addition to that. Um, we also have intervision um, with our psychology team. We have a wellbeing practitioner within the team who provides weekly sessions as well. Um, and we also have end of day catch ups as a team across the three localities. And again, that's making sure that us as professionals, sometimes we come across complex and very difficult um, challenges during our working day, as I'm sure you guys do. Um, and it's to make sure that we're going home as feeling as safe and secure as possible, because sometimes you have a really rubbish day, um, as I'm sure some people can recognize with. So, um, and again, the, the bottom bit is around working as a united team and sharing space and working amongst one another. 
I think one thing that we really pride ourselves on is that we, we have that healthy challenge and we have those boundaries as well to make sure that we get what's best for the patient. But again, we keep our um, boundaries with the staff. Just finish, just I won't go through the rest of it, but I suppose I just wanted to share this because I think while this is a mental health team, and I know lots of you are not from a, a mental health teams, but this is really about for us about thinking about the people, the people who are considered very ill and people who have lost teams have given up hope and families have given up hope. And actually this kind of just focusing on a person-centered way of working with them, we can get incredible outcomes. And for, for, my, for us, that's the bit. It's, what we said right at the start was that actually we want to focus on getting people back to their own homes and wrapping care, wrap up care around them so they could actually live lives. And actually that's, that's work. So that's really a take-home message for this. Um, and that's at least part of our team. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And, and